Kim Jong-un regime alone. The president just days ahead of his high stakes meeting with the Chinese president telling the Financial Times if China is not going to solve North Korea, we will. Also tonight, NBC News has learned the U.S. government believes an underground nuclear test by North Korea could happen at any time. And so tonight, we're getting an inside and exclusive look at how U.S. forces here are preparing to deal with a growing threat. In a moment, we'll take you to the underground location where the U.S. monitors activity in North Korea. But first, NBC's Richard Engel with what's at stake in this region. Kim Jong-un is unpredictable, critics say vain and vindictive with an expanding nuclear arsenal. And tonight, there are growing signs he could spark the first global crisis for President Trump. The Korean Peninsula is a tinderbox. Any miscalculation could result in, in a conflict that affects American troops. Just last month, Kim Jong-un's regime stepped up testing its missiles, which can already reach both South Korea and Japan. North Korea said it was practice for targeting U.S. bases in Japan and the 46,000 American personnel stationed there. The nightmare scenario? If North Korea can miniaturize a nuclear warhead and put it on a missile that could reach the West Coast. Intelligence officials tell NBC News the U.S. would consider military action to prevent that. On Friday, Defense Secretary James Mattis issuing this warning to North Korea. Right now, it appears to be going in a very, uh, a very reckless manner, and that's got to be stopped. But the North Korean dictator has a high tolerance for risk. Like deploying, Malaysia claims, two assassins to kill Kim Jong-un's half-brother inside a crowded Malaysian airport by rubbing the world's most powerful chemical weapon in his face. And who's checking North Korea's behavior? China has been mostly quiet. And South Korea's president was thrown out of office on corruption charges. So now the Trump administration is talking bluntly, refusing to rule out preemptive strikes. The message to Kim Jong-un, don't push too far. But the tough talk could actually help the North Korean regime, reinforcing the propaganda it feeds its people, that it needs to be strong to resist American aggression. Lester? We're also getting rare insight, Richard, into Kim Jong-un's readiness to use nuclear weapons against the U.S. A stark warning from a former diplomat who last year became the most high-profile North Korean de de defector in decades. Tae Young Ho says Kim is desperate and would not hesitate to strike. So do you think that he would launch a preemptive strike if, if he had the weapons and the missiles that he would do it? Once... Uh, he sees that uh, there is any kind of sign of, you know, a uh, kind of attack or in imminent uh, threat from America, then he would, you know, use his, his you know, nuclear uh, weapons, you know, with ICBM. Tay was serving as North Korea's deputy ambassador to the United Kingdom when he risked his life to defect and speak <coughs> out against the regime. Which puts the focus back on U.S. military options. Unlike most other Air Force squadrons, the fighter units here at Osan don't really prepare to ship out and deploy to war in some far-off place. If war starts, for them, it will happen in plain view. The adversary, North Korea, is at their doorstep. Tonight, an exclusive look at the ominous threat and how they prepare every day to confront it. A U-2 spy plane taxis toward takeoff as dawn breaks over the Korean Peninsula this morning. Its pilot fitted in a NASA-like pressure suit to withstand the eight-hour-long mission at soaring altitudes that will take him near the edge of space. With North Korea's unsettling ambitions and rhetoric rising, demand for these intelligence missions is high. It's a constant tempo. We're very busy all the time. In the last 10 years, we've been the busiest we've ever been in this airplane. The distance from Osan Air Base to North Korea is about equal to that from Baltimore to Washington, less than 50 miles. The base's slogan, ready to fight tonight, because it could happen that quickly. Everybody on the installation has to know very quickly where they need to go, uh, where they need to have their gear, but most importantly, what role that they do uh, in a warfighting environment. 
Patriot missile batteries defend the base from North Korean ballistic missiles. Preparations for chemical attacks are constant. Air crews hone their combat readiness. We've been granted rare access to the Air Operations Center deep underground, the place where North Korean missile launches are first detected. This facility is so critical, war planners say it is the number one target of the North if hostilities break out. Thus, what we're allowed to show you is highly restricted. Suffice to say, layers of sensors give these American and South Korean operators a very detailed view of threats that they'll have minutes to react to. When you see a missile launch from the North, you have to know whether it's coming here or Seoul or going harmlessly to sea pretty quickly. Uh, we do. Uh, time of flight is pretty short, but uh, we have uh, great capabilities all throughout this peninsula that are ready to respond. The American commanders here say their prime mission remains deterrence, but they're ready to act if necessary. If North Korea launched a rocket, and if we did not know whether it was a satellite or a warhead on top, we, the United States, would likely try to shoot it down. In response, North Korea will try a number of things, in part by sending artillery fire into South Korea. And right away, you have a major conventional war on our hands. While the posture of the 28,000 plus American military personnel has not outwardly changed, the level of tension certainly has. I've never seen uh, greater concern uh, from a, a regional perspective of the threat that is being uh, posed by North Korea. I'm looking at his wingtips. Back at Osan, racing at nearly 100 miles an hour inside a chase car that monitors the ungainly U-2's takeoff, we can only guess at the spy plane's destination in search of answers about a secretive and unpredictable adversary. The U.S. Air Force has contingency plans in the event of hostilities. They would bring in other squadrons, other units from different bases around the Pacific. Also overseas tonight, a race to find out who is behind a horrific bombing in the sub.